Hello, friends. Welcome to the Angels and Awakening podcast. My name's Julie Jancis, and I am an angel messenger. I bring through messages for my clients every day from their angels, guides, and loved ones. And today I have on a client who has become a friend, Summer Court Camp. She's actually Chef Summer Court Camp, and she is on Instagram. So if you're looking up her last name, um, you know, Summer is normally spelled, but Court Camp is K. O-R-T-K-A-M-P, Court Camp. So if you want to look her up while we're talking to her today, she's over there on Instagram. Summer, what's your Instagram handle? My Instagram handle is at Chef Summer Cooks. It's way easier than using my last name. (laughs) (laughs) So it's at Chef Summer Cooks. That's perfect. Okay, so we are talking about food today, but before I get emails from everyone, I want to tell you what I've been working on over the last month, but I'm not telling you that you have to do this in your own life, okay? I'm just sharing about my life, where I'm at, and my personal journey of self-love and self-worth and confidence and really physical health. Because throughout my entire life, I have put so much emphasis on my spiritual well-being being in my high vibration that I have not stopped to focus on my physical health. In addition to the spiritual part of me, I can also, my downfall in life, and I know this, is that I could work 24-7 if they let me and not take a break. And when you do that, you're not taking care of yourself. You're not taking care of your physical body. So over the last 15 years, I have not watched what I've been eating. I have not exercised regularly. And it's not about weight. I'm not weighing myself on any scale. What it is, it's about my family, me going into meditation, and in those meditations, seeing from my spirit team coming in that I am genetically following the path of a couple of people, you know, 20, 30, um, some 40 years ahead of me who are now in a very bad spot physically, who are paying hundreds of dollars, almost over a thousand dollars a month for prescription medicines. And I can't even fathom what that price is going to be when I retire. Um, I have been waking up over the last year and a half with very swollen feet that hurt to walk on in the middle of the night. And when I went into meditation, they said, if you, and by they, I mean my spirit team, they said, if you don't do something about this now, because uh, I'm not a medical medium, but my spirit team did diagnose me as pre-diabetes. They said, if you don't do something about this now, this is going to catch up with you and it's not going to be an easy road to climb. If you start loving yourself and focusing on your physical health now, it will be easier for you to correct now versus later, Julie. So I've listened to that. It's taken me a long time. Uh, My friend Kim, who is a personal trainer, she always tells her clients, you have to have a why. And as her and I would go on these long walks, she would say, but Julie, what's your why? What's your why? She goes, you know, some of my clients want to lose weight. Some of them want to fit into this size pant. And I said, I, I don't care about any of that. I don't care about any of that at all because there is beauty at every size body that there is. Um, I just don't want to get to be age 60, 70, 80, 90 hopefully I live to 105, and be hurting chronically for the rest of my life. There have been other symptoms besides the swollen feet that have developed where 
It's almost like a chronic fibromyalgia throughout the entire body. And I've noticed that the Reiki energy healing is not getting rid of that achiness. And as I've gone into meditation, I have asked over and over again, what am I doing wrong or why is this not going away? And they said, And this is why I believe so strongly in combining alternative health therapies with modern day medicine because it is in what we eat. So all of these spiritual factors came together to bring Summer on my couch right now. And mainly what happened is the same week of her session, Blake said, uh, Blake loves the Adam Carolla podcast. So um, he has on this guy named Vinny Tortorich. Vinny Tortorich is a big talker on food. And Vinny's got out this documentary that came out in July called Fat. And I was like, I don't want to watch this. This is going to be about why America is so obese. And that's the reason that it's named this. It's actually not. The reason that it's named Fat is because The way the system was built made us think that fat is not good for us, when in fact, fat is what we need to have a healthy body, to have a healthy physical being. So I definitely read... I definitely recommend watching that documentary because it is interesting to see how it all lines up and see that nobody's really coming out with the truth because the government can't come out and say because of the food pyramid that was wrong and it killed how many people over the last couple of decades, you know, they're not going to come out and say that. This documentary explains that all. And what happened was the weekend that we watched that at the end of the documentary, Vinny says, don't wait until tomorrow. Don't wait until Monday. Start now. So we did. We started following what he says, which really isn't keto or keto. Keto. Okay. Keto. It's really not keto. What he says is no grains, no sugar. But we started following this and not even a couple days later, summer comes into my office <laughs> and spirit starts showing us how we're going to be working together. And I remember I was like, you know, let's just, if you could give me some recipes of how I could live this way and eat this way and still enjoy food because I'm Italian and let's face it, like every meal we're thinking about what we're going to have for the next meal. I, I can't live off of like just bare staples, right? Like I have to have some variety, some different yummy, delicious foods in there. So I asked Summer, I said, you know, if you could just bring me a couple of recipes, if we could trade for some recipes, I'd be good with that. And she ended up coming over to my house with all of these meals prepared. (laughs) And I was like, Oh my goodness, say what? I love you. <laughs> I mean, food is is the best. It's the best present anybody could ever get. And I thought to myself, like, why would I just give you recipes when I could just make it for you? Because I know you're busy. Aww. That was that was the biggest thing is I one of the questions I asked you when we were talking, I said, lunch or dinner? Do you want both? How much time do you have to eat for lunch, et cetera? And when you said that you were really busy, I thought, well, I'm just going to do this. And that way it'll take a little burden off of you. Oh, my gosh. So. And it's been awesome. It's been <laughs> awesome. So we've been working together ever since and just coming up with some different things that we want to share with you today here. And what we really want to get across in the message today is that this isn't something that's a diet. It's something that's a lifestyle change that Blake and I have committed to doing for forever because we want to be healthy and feeling good within our physical bodies at age, you know, um, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. And we know that the path that we're on right now isn't getting us there. So this change is not about the scale at all. In fact, I'm not weighing myself. It's just about self-love. It's about being my own angel so that in the future, I feel good. 
So Summer, tell us a little bit more about yourself. You first came in for a session a couple of years ago. Maybe tell us a little bit about that too. Well, I came in, I think it was, it was last year. Yeah. It was last year. And we have a mutual friend Mm -hmm. and our mutual friend told me about you and she said, you just, you need to go see Julie. You need to go see Julie. And I said, you know what? I do need to go. I do need to go see Julie. But it was one of those things where, um, you know, the timing wasn't right. So I waited a while. I came in and I saw you um, and I was, it's funny because when the first time that I came in to see you, I was sort of at this precipice of do I, I was working full time as a private chef um, for one family and I was kind of on this precipice of do I stay with this or do I go out and do something on my own? Mm -hmm. And the reason why I felt that way is because I I wanted to feel more fulfilled with what I did. And I wanted to be able to, you know, interact with more people and, and try to help more people. And I thought to myself, the only way to do that is to go out on my own, but I had no idea, you know, what it was, what it would look like at that point. Um, I really just kind of didn't have too many ideas. (laughs) And it's funny because I came in and one of the first things that happened was uh, my mom passed away in 2010. And um, I was kind of expecting her to come through because she's just, you know, one of those personalities that she's, she's, it, there aren't words to describe her. She was a wonderful, wonderful woman, full of life, amazing. And I had a feeling that she would probably try to come through. And it was one of the first things that happened um, was my mom came through to you. Yeah. And you also mentioned that there was an older gentleman there. And I knew instantly it was my grandfather because my grandfather raised me. Yeah. Um, you know, he was kind of the father figure in my life. And they're kind of like my spiritual dream team, come to find out. Um, so. Both of them came through. Um, my mom was, was telling you ways that she thought that I could help to expand what I'm doing, kind of, you know, give, gave me some ideas. And it was really overwhelming at the time because I just wasn't sure. There were so many directions to take that I wasn't sure. And I kind of. Didn't she talk about you stepping back from your personal cooking and kind of doing something yes on your own, yes and you end up doing yes that's exactly that's exactly what happened but it kind of took a little bit of a little bit of time and a lot of courage um to do that but I finally make a decision I finally you know made a decision to do it because I really felt like I was you know supported mm-hmm. so that was kind of the catalyst it took me a little while longer but I started out on my own in January or February mm-hmm. And gosh, I mean, it's been what nine months now, yeah. and things things are really, really picking up, and I feel like I've gotten a lot more direction. And when I came in, I was, I was when I came in to see you the last time, the most recent time, I was kind of at another, you know, crossroads. Like, okay, I've done part A, now I need to figure out what I'm going to do for part B. And that's when you kind of just like you're like, well, your mom's in my ear again, <laughs> and all this stuff just came, just pouring out. And it made me realize that there was a reason why you and I got together. Yeah. And, you know, something something that you said a little bit earlier kind of struck me when you said, you know, it's your way of eating well is your way of practicing self-love. And I think that is the number one way that you can show love to yourself and your family yeah. to everyone around you. Because when you really eat well and you take care of yourself, you're a better person all around for everyone in your life. And one thing that you described, you described kind of inflammation in your feet. And that's exactly what it is. It's, it's inflammation. And that is something that most often, unless you have a serious underlying, you know, chronic Uh, disease or something like that. And I'm not a medical professional. I'm just saying that in my experience, I've seen it's mostly inflammation, which is brought on by foods, certain foods. Mm -hmm. Certain people have sensitivities to um, all different kinds of foods. Mm -hmm. And it's not just 
you know, heavily processed foods. It's even foods that are minimally processed that aren't necessarily whole foods. It could be just, um, you know, byproduct of the oil they use or some other preservative agent that causes inflammation. And I think that's an epidemic and a lot of people are seeing it. But the important thing is realizing the relation to food, you know, the relationship that you have with food is you're literally ingesting something and it's becoming part of you and it's becoming the building blocks and your cells and who you are. Mm -hmm. And it's so important to pay attention to that, especially as we get older. Um, like you said, to be able to live a, a full life. Oh yeah. 100%. And this isn't something that we just started. This is something that we've been doing for over a month now. Um, And when I came to Summer and I talked to her about it, I was like, if we're going to work together, here's what I need. Because because I know a lot of people within the spiritual community advocate for 100% veganism, right? And I follow different spiritual healers and energy healers who have been doing this work for decades upon decades, some of the most well-renowned people in their field. And there are people out there who say that every body, every single body needs something different. And there are people out there, energy healers who have said some people need meat some people don't. So I'm not here to tell you what to eat or how to eat. But what I wanted to do with my family and Summer was to see if we could make really phenomenal meals that were vegetarian Monday through Friday and then do meat on the weekends. So two days a week, we were eating meat, five days a week, no meat. And I was shocked because I wanted to get more vegetables into our family, but literally my repertoire of vegetables are roasted Brussels sprouts, salads that are pretty plain. When somebody asked me to bring a salad for the first time, I literally brought like bags of salad and dressing, like no (laughs) toppings whatsoever. Um, Roasted broccoli, heat up a can of green beans with a little olive oil, a little vinegar, a little salt and pepper. That's all I know vegetables, that's it. So when I, when summer was coming over with meals, I'm like, wait, what? (laughs) You can do this, this, and this with vegetables. I was like, you have to come on the podcast and share this with moms who are, are busy, who don't have much time because these are easy recipes that they can make. And I told summer, you have to create a program. So she's working on it where you can, you know, like buy a month's worth of recipes or a week's worth of recipes from her. So that's something that she'll be coming out with later, but we're going to give you one recipe recipe today. We're also going to be talking about some of the things over the last month that have been working for our family. Um, I also gave Summer a lot of like distinctions of we don't do tofu and we don't do mushrooms. Um, we're allergic. We, we don't like really the texture of tofu and there were a lot of things that we couldn't do. So she had, she's like, this is the first time I've ever making something like this. So you're my guinea pig. We're testing it out. But I want to talk about some of those, those things because like I never knew there were low carb noodles, Mm -hmm. shirataki noodles. What are shirataki noodles? So shirataki noodles are, uh, they're noodle shaped and they're actually, a lot of them are from a specific type of yam. It's a yam noodle and the way that your body digests them, um, there's a lot of insoluble fiber in there, but it doesn't give you um, a stomach upset. But the way that your body digests it, it basically makes you feel full, but there's no calories, no um, carbs or anything like that. Some of them are made from tofu. Some of them are made from kelp, like the ones I brought you this week are sea kelp noodles. So you're getting some nutrients, some iodine and things like that in there. But essentially, it's a noodle replacement. So it gives you that texture mm-hmm. of having a noodle um, without the calories or the carbs. So those, I, my clients do a lot of those, a lot of those. 
Those are amazing because you actually feel like you're getting like a pasta mm -hmm. and coming from a family that eats pasta more than once a week, like that was huge to feel like, oh my gosh, I can actually eat this. Right. And um, I've gone down an entire size in jeans. I had to go out and get new jeans wow. this month, which is not the end goal, but it's my stomach. All of the inflammation yes, is yeah. gone down. That's the All of it. And I know that some of you look at my pictures and you're like, Julie, you look great. I know how to pose. <laughs> <laughs> I know how to pull my shoulders back. I know how to stand with one foot a little bit back, how to cross your yeah. legs a little bit. Anybody can look good in photos if you just know how to pose just a little bit. Right. It's all posing. So shirataki noodles, love them. And you've done them with like an Alfredo sauce. You've done them with a pasta sauce, a vodka sauce, mm -hmm. pesto. Yes. And, and it's just delicious. Thank you very much. There. Oh, the other thing that you said that I wanted to hit on the coolest thing about this too, is I've gone through my entire life thinking about food and knowing that I had a problem with it mm -hmm. since about third grade and always not knowing what was the right thing to do. But I remember saying throughout my entire life, I don't understand what full is. I can go into Subway, eat an entire sub sandwich and still want more. I can go to um, Maggiano's Little Italy, have an entire thing of pasta and still want more. I have never known what full is until Summer brought over these keto bagels. Yes. So, um, <laughs> so you'll see different keto, keto, keto. Gosh, I always say that wrong. Sorry. Keto, tomato, tomato, tomato. <laughs> keto bagels. And at first I was like, how can you have bagels? that are keto, you know, you can't have grains, but they're not grains. They're almond flour or coconut flour. Mm -hmm. And so these keto bagels, I went to go eat one with some cream cheese because that's what you had written on the yes. sticky. Yes. And I got through half of it and I was like, oh my gosh, I am feeling the sensation of fullness mm -hmm. for the very first time in my entire life. Wow. Do you have other clients who say the same thing? Absolutely. I think um, th that's kind of the point of the whole keto program or even just just aside from that, just healthy eating and eliminating things. Um, refined sugar is probably the worst one, but your body kind of gets in this state of addiction. You and I talked about that. Yeah. And the keto flu. Yes, because the keto flu, which I'm sure you can talk mm -hmm. about. <laughs> um, but your body becomes, it gets in this cycle of being addicted to sugar and carbohydrates and things like that. And you don't feel full. You don't necessarily feel full, but you're kind of rewiring your brain and your body when you deprive you know, yourself, I shouldn't say deprive, that's not the right word. When you eliminate mm -hmm. um, certain things from your diet. Mm -hmm. So can you describe then when you when you went through the first couple stages of, of keto, because it usually it takes about a week yeah. um, for your body to go into full ketosis. Mm -hmm. And then you get the keto flu. Yeah. Do you want to describe that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because that is not pleasant. So Blake and I did decide to take it one step further than Vinnie Tortorich's documentary, uh, No Grains, No Sugar. And we decided to try keto. And when we did, everybody warns you of the keto flu, which is about four or five days in and it lasts for about four or five days, but you feel like absolute poop. You feel like you have zero energy. Your body feels achy. Some of your muscles start cramping up and you just have to get through that. I did take some Excedrin migraine mm -hmm. because I just had to get rid of the headaches. But what I found, um, and Shalene Johnson on her podcast she's got the new 131 method it takes you through and I'll have my friend who's the trainer Kim on to talk about this more but it takes you through and I haven't I haven't looked at this I've just from hearsay I think you do keto for about the first month mm -hmm. and then she takes you into after that you have days where you can eat you know your potatoes yes. um, more fruits you have your high carb days mm -hmm. well 
I, I believe what's happening there, what people say, is that you're going from being a carb burner before through the keto process, mm-hmm. keto process to being a fat burner. And once you get to that point, then you can kind of add in some of those carb days, but they're your healthy carbs like your potatoes, your sweet potatoes, your fruits um, throughout your week so that you're still getting those things. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I'll have Kim on so that we could talk about that. She's a nutritionist. Mm -hmm. But I just love that throughout this entire process, first, I wouldn't have been able to do this without Summer. Like she made it really possible for our family. Yeah, no, I mean it. But she really showed us along the way that it's not about not eating the foods you love. It's about trying new foods that you're going to love just as much, if not more. It's about replacing what you are eating with something that is healthier. Like instead of the wheat pasta that I would be eating before, now we're doing shirataki noodles. Instead of, you know, your regular breads, we're doing the keto bagels or keto buns. Keto. Um, <laughs> Instead of your regular chocolate, we found this chocolate called Lily's Chocolate. It's a little bit more expensive, but it doesn't increase your sugars or your insulin levels. It doesn't have that type of sugar in it. So you can use it and talk to us about fat bombs because our family is obsessed with making like sweet fat fat bombs to kind of get some of that chocolate in our system. Talk to us about that. So I think one of the biggest things when people do a lifestyle change like this is they think about, well, I'm going to miss this. I'm going to miss that. And it's true. I mean, in the beginning, you definitely get cravings. But the wonderful thing about keto is that you can use something like a natural sugar substitute, whether it's monk fruit. I'm not a big fan of stevia. I don't like the taste of it. But you could, there are natural ways to substitute um, sugar to where it doesn't you know, spike your, spike your blood sugar, but you still get that sweet. So fat bombs are basically usually some sort of nut butter. If you're allergic to nuts, you can do like a coconut oil. I make a really, really good coconut oil and toasted coconut bar that I'll tell you about. That's really good too. But basically it's a a big bomb of fat. That's exactly what it is. And it really, you, you described it as feeling full. So you get really satiated because your body needs that fat. It really does. And so fat bombs are are great and they're you can you know put them in throughout the day when you're if you're getting a craving or you just want to have like a snack. Yeah. Chocolate, coconut oil, um butter is something else that you can have on keto which is great. Yeah. And yeah. uh so yeah, those are the one that you made that I tried was really good. Yeah. The peanut butter one it tasted like a Reese's, mm-hmm. but better because you didn't get that like artificial Yes whatever i think they they use dextrose which is um powdered sugar so you get that like kind of fake sugar taste mm-hmm. but the one that that you had was really nice Aww. Yeah, was good. thank you um well and what i found too is that I used to have terrible, terrible headaches mm-hmm. before, and I used to have to take Excedrin migraine pretty much like candy every single day. And it's all linked to the food that I was eating because I haven't taken it except for twice in the last month. Wow. And it's only been when I was at a birthday party and I took two bites of a frosted cupcake, um, licked that frosting off the top, and I also was at Portillo's with my daughter yesterday and I had two like big gulps of her uh, chocolate milkshake Mm -hmm. headaches bam like right after both of those Mm -hmm. but I haven't it's gone away other than that if I stick to the healthy eating plan I don't have it well I think a big thing too is people think that eating healthy or a lot of people and I was guilty of this too a long time ago but I think a lot of people think that um, or believe that eating healthy, you're not going to feel full. You're not going to feel, you know, you're going to feel deprived in some way. And I think one thing that my clients kind of struggle with too, is they're, they're all busy moms. And I think, you know, being a busy mom and being busy women in general and men too, I'm not going to discriminate, but I think a lot of women don't even view it Uh, view outsourcing the whole food portion as an option because I feel like 
we feel we're obligated, like I should be able to do this, I should be able to, you know, make healthy meals for my family. But when you add it on to the other, you know, million and one things that you're doing, it's okay to it's okay to outsource something like this, especially if you want to make it a priority. And it gives you your time back. It makes it so that you don't have to, it doesn't have to be a pain point. It doesn't have to be stress. Like, oh my God, what am I going to do? Now I have to go grocery shopping. Now I have to figure this out. How much do I feed my kids this? That's why, you know, having someone like me as a partner is really, really helpful because you're not going to be stressed out and you get a lot of time back and now you just pull out food and you're, you're done. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. So I think, I think that's a, a really good thing. And Healthy food doesn't have to be terrible. No. 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 In fact, um, I've told my husband that every single dish that Summer has created has tasted like restaurant quality. It is just unbelievably amazing. And I have been working with her because what I decided was I work you know, most Saturdays all day are doing a party at night. And my only time with Blake and with Elle are on Sundays. So we did make the investment as a family to hire Summer to prepare dinners for our week. And it has been phenomenal. It doesn't cost as much as you think it does. And it is so worth it because instead of sitting there I'm not familiar with food. I don't know what goes together. And trying to look on Pinterest, figure out all the ingredients that I need, go to the store, get it, then come try and cook it. It's just a hassle. And half the time it doesn't turn out the way that I want it to turn out. And now I'm frustrated, hungry, and wanting to spend time with my family, feeling guilty that I can't. And this has just made the entire transition just so much easier. Yeah. I'm very glad to hear that. I, I can't tell you, you know, what a difference that makes when I hear feedback like that. Um, you know, just, just to be able to, to help people and to make their lives a little easier. Mm -hmm. I have one client, um, she's a doctor and she's just an amazing, amazing person, human being. But she actually, she's one of my oldest clients when I've, not oldest in age, but I'm saying that I've had her for the longest. Yeah. Um, but it was kind of funny because a couple months in, she said, you know, one of the reasons why I hired you was because I wanted to start um, volunteering and doing, you know, helping um, people that didn't have insurance or that needed medical medical care. I wanted to be able to give my time to those people. And I was spending so much time, you know, during the week planning food for my family and planning meals and shopping. And she said, I made a decision that I was going to hire you Mm-hmm. So that I could now give my time, you know, to my family and to, to other people. So that was that was kind of um, one of the first aha moments I had when she said that to me, you know, just kind of putting things in perspective. And I thought this is exactly why all those months ago that I decided to make the switch yeah. was to be able to help people. And I think time is one of those resources that it's so valuable and you don't get it back. Yeah. And who wants to spend life being stressed out about green beans? You know, right. it's my, that's my job. I, I don't get stressed out by green beans, you know, yeah. but just to kind of give people a way to spend more time with their family and just feel more happy and fulfilled and feel healthier yeah. is that's a, that's a real gift. So I'm glad to hear that it's working yeah. for you. No, it is. It is a really amazing gift. And I, we want, Summer's going to come on the podcast once a month because we want to make this transition for you at home easier. That if you wanted to eat more vegetables, we are going to give away one recipe each time she comes on and teach you some tricks that you can do at home to make your life easier. So I thought one of the things that we could share too is you made you cut like cauliflower just like you sliced it like it was thick huge chunks of bread right and then you made it like chicken parmesan yes it was it was amazing oh i'm glad you like yeah so tell us about this okay so i like to do what i call um cauliflower parmesan 
you cut, and the important thing is with the with the cauliflower, you want to cut it thicker and use the middle pieces because if you don't cut it thick enough, they'll kind of like crumble and fall apart. And you can roast them beforehand if you want to, but just to make it easy, you cut the cauliflower, you season it with salt and pepper, and you dredge it in. If you're doing, this is keto as well, yeah. uh, do a mixture of heavy cream and egg and kind of just like let it soak up. And I usually season it with some salt or pepper. Um, and then you roll it in Parmesan cheese mm. and you fry it. You can use ghee, you can use butter, you can use olive oil. You just sort of fry it maybe five to eight minutes each side, depending on the thickness. Mm -hmm. And there you go. Or if you have a deep fryer, you can deep fry it. But it's a little easier, I think, to pan fry it. Yeah. It was so delicious. And you didn't feel like you were eating cauliflower because mm -hmm. typically I have not liked cauliflower, but you put it in so many different dishes that I feel like <laughs> I love <laughs> cauliflower now. Yes. Yes. With, with the cauliflower... With the cauliflower parmesan, you can serve it with a red sauce, just like you would with a chicken parmesan. You can put cheese on top of it, you know, make some green beans real quick, and you've got a really good healthy meal that tastes amazing. So this, this time during our session, you're going to be giving away a recipe, which I'm really excited for because I tasted this at a restaurant last year, but I never knew I would be able to make it. You're making a fall squash soup yes tell us about this okay so this is one of the easiest recipes ever all you need is a sheet pan an oven and your vegetables and that's pretty much it so it's a butternut squash soup roasted wow. butternut squash soup mm. so basically you take um one nice size squash you can double it too you know if you want to make some for the week so let's just say you take two squash you take about 10 to 15 garlic cloves, and I know that seems like a lot, but when you roast them, it really mellows out that flavor and gives you a lot of that good, you know, garlicky immunity stuff that's good for your, your whole body during the season. And you can take uh, two or three shallots. If you want to use onions, that's fine. I just like the shallots kind of give it that restaurant type of taste. So you cut up your squash into about one inch cubes. You put them on a sheet pan. I like to use parchment because it makes my life easier and I don't have to clean up as much. <laughs> um, and you put your garlic cloves, your uh, just kind of mince your shallots. Nothing has to be perfect. You put everything on a sheet pan. You can drizzle. I like to use coconut oil with this recipe um, because I think coconut oil and butternut squash go really well together. You can use olive oil, butter, whatever you want to use. You roast it at 425 for about 25 minutes. And then you pull it out of the oven, put it in a bowl, and puree it with some coconut milk, a little salt and pepper, and you're done. You have a delicious soup. Mm. Yeah, the coconut milk in it is really nice. And if you're not a fan of coconut milk, then just use uh cream, heavy cream, just a little bit of it to sort of thin it out. So basically all the vegetables in the pan, you roast it, puree it, and you're done. It's amazing soup. That sounds delicious. Yeah. My mouth's watering just thinking about it. <laughs> it's a perfect time of year for it. Too. It is. It is perfect for yeah. the fall. I love that. So that's our story on food this week, but you have an angel story about your mom coming through to you. And I want you to share that with everybody because it's so powerful and it's a story that you don't hear often, but it's something that I hear because of the work that I do. And I just want you to understand how powerful it is when spirit can come through this way. So um, my mom uh, passed, I think I mentioned it earlier, but just in case you missed it, my mom passed away in 2010. And as you can imagine, it was, you know, devastating. My mom was my best friend. And I remember the first time I kind of sensed her coming through was maybe a week or so after she had passed. And I was out with my friends. We were out shopping, you know, trying to take my mind off of stuff. And my mom loved hearts. <laughs> and it was the craziest thing because everywhere my eye would look that day, I would see hearts. We walked into an eyeglasses store and she always had these really cool eyeglasses. She loved her glasses. And I saw a pair that had a bunch of hearts on it. And that was kind of the first, the first moment when I just realized that, that she was 
that I could still feel her and that she was still there. A few months later, I was going through, you know, you have your good days and bad days after you lose someone you love, but I was having a particularly uh, bad day. And I was going through um, books and papers and things like that, like just old stuff in, in my closet. And I remember all of a sudden just being overwhelmed with this feeling of just love and um, it's, I tried to describe it to you earlier. It's really difficult to describe, but it just kind of, it felt like a big, like a big hug and just all this warmth. And it was a beautiful thing. And I, I felt, it felt like my mom's energy when I was younger, when I was like five or six years old before she got sick. And I just felt like I had been given a gift that I knew that she was okay. I knew it was her. You know, I absolutely 110% knew it was her. And she kind of let me know how she was feeling at that moment and let me feel what she was feeling. That's what I, that's kind of what I, um, what I felt in my heart it was. And I knew she was okay. And that really started healing, kind of a healing process for me. And it's been one of the greatest gifts that I've ever been given in my life. Well, and I love that story so much because I hear so often from clients that I work with that they get this sense of their family member being there, that presence of that person. But when you really go into it and you talk to people deeper, like we were talking earlier, there's a profound sense of love that is like love that we felt here, but just times a billion. Mm -hmm. And it's so profound that when I felt it for the first time, it was just tears started streaming down my face because you can't live in that vibration here without you're in ecstasy, right? You're in total peace. They call it heaven for a reason because it is beyond anything that we feel in our day to day. It's almost like you're your brain and and every you can't process it it's just so much yeah totally but there are so many people who report feeling that feeling and when i've gone into meditation spirit has shown me um, have you heard of spiritual teachers going into deep states of meditation where they access these different places on the other side or they access like this triangle and purple space and um, I've heard it talked about in different ways but that's what it is I mean they're coming into a state of love and peace a vibration from the other side that is just so beyond so beyond so real yeah yeah So if you have stories about angels, about loved ones coming through, we would love to share your stories on the show. Please email those stories to to me and we can set up a time to chat over the phone more to get your stories recorded. We love to share these on the podcast. We are going to have Summer back on the show next month to talk about more, yay, (laughs) to talk about more ways that we can make delicious recipes um, that are easy, that are quick for all of us who are busy on the go. And we want your questions. What questions do you have for us? Go on over to Facebook, Instagram, our Facebook group, Angels and Awakening Podcast Tribe. And let us know what questions you have. You can find me at all those places at Angel Podcasts. That's the at sign, Angel Podcast. Summer, if people want to find you, if they want to hire you, if they want to work with you, how can they reach you? How can they find you? Well, there are two ways uh, currently to reach me. The first would be my website, which is www dot chef summer cooks just like it sounds dot com um there's a little contact me button um there's also my bio on there and you can i do a monthly inspiration just kind of inspired by the time of year and um, certain ingredients that are in season so i do a seasonal 
it's not seasonal, it's monthly. I do a monthly inspiration <laughs> on my website as well. Um, and you can also direct message me on Instagram, which is at Chef Summer Cooks. I wanted to keep it consistent. So both places are Chef Summer Cooks. It's just whether it's my website or Instagram. That's perfect. Um, friends, you know, I don't ask you to support the show by a membership program or Patreon. What I ask is that if this podcast resonates with you, if you get benefit out of this podcast, please book a 25 or a 55 minute reading with me or a Reiki healing session. I'd love to work with you. And that is the money that we use to keep this podcast going. You can also be an angel and share this podcast with anyone who you feel needs it. I know the angels are telling me that right now there are people listening who are much more skilled at nutrition than I am and who run the programs on Facebook and, uh, you know, there's faster way to fat loss. There's the 131 method. If you want to get in touch, if you want to connect on this so that I'm saying things right, feel free to email me. We can chat and we can kind of go from there. But um, don't forget to rate the podcast five stars, leave a positive review so that we can put your name into the monthly drawing to win a free session with me. Friends, thank you so much for sharing your time with us today. Your angels, your guides, your loved ones, they all are with you, loving you, guiding you, protecting you. They want you to open up your heart to all of the unexpected blessings that are coming into your life right now. So take some time to just really envision that. Envision your heart opening. Envision them coming to you with those blessings wrapped as presents. I'm not asking you today to change your lifestyle, to change how you eat. I would never put that on other people. But there are some folks out there who are like me, who are feeling the symptoms that I was feeling, who just want to give themselves the gift of more self-love. And there's no better way to do that than to figure this out for yourself. Um, I have pretty much tried everything throughout my entire life and nothing has worked like this has. I have not counted calories over the last month. I have not limited the food that I have been eating. I eat when I'm hungry and I stop when I'm full and I make sure that I am getting in my chocolatey sweets every day. In fact, I think I have been eating better and more on this than I ever have. And it doesn't feel like something that is tedious, that is hard, that I can't stick with my whole life. I love how I feel. I have so much mental clarity. I have so much more energy and I am just loving feeling better, feeling like I have less inflammation, no more headaches and no more pain, chronic pain within my body. So this is what's working for me. Everybody has to figure out what works for them and really not get down on yourself because you're different, right? Everybody's going to have something different that works for them. And that is okay. If you need an angel team to help you with this, if this is something that resonates with you that you want to maybe start in your life, you can get your own angel team here by hiring somebody like Summer or Summer herself. And you can also ask for God to give you the angels that are going to assist you in this process to help you along the way. So ask for that separate team of angels to just help you in your self-love journey. Friends, I love you so much. They love you so much. Have a blessed, blessed week. Sending you peace, bliss, and many, many blessings.